You ready to get in college football? Come on. Let's do it. College football week one against the spread. We are doing pick them right here. Chris and I are going to discuss some games that uh, I did not discuss on the BetUS show. Some, I believe, he has discussed on SBR, but we will we will rehash some of this stuff. And we will start off this week with the biggest matchup of them all, Clemson and Georgia. Chris, I believe you said on your show that this could be the biggest game of the year, and we get it in week one. And I, I don't know that I can disagree with you. Clemson is a three-point favorite. Odds, of course, provided by BetUS, where the game begins. Again, promo code NCAAF2021. Go ahead and check out the description for the link to check it out. I I will go ahead and tell you, I'm going to ride Georgia here. This is These are not official plays, by the way, anything like that. We're, we're going to do a pick them here and talk about the games, kind of break them down a little bit. But I, I like Georgia. Whoever was getting points here, I, I was probably going to go with the dog. Yep. Because I, I do think, I mean, these teams are very similarly talented. And I, I think this is a breakout year for the Georgia offense. The fact that Clemson's offensive line appears to be having some issues, that scares me a little bit. But I've also, do you hear all this stuff about, like, pot, like availability issues due to COVID? With no, I haven't teams? heard any of the COVID stuff. And when, when, I, when I broke it down and made my pick, it, none of that was there. My, my issue... It's a little scary betting against Clemson, obviously, all the time. Well, yeah. But I think I think your talent matchup's pretty even. I am afraid the best coach on the field works for Clemson, and it ain't Dabo. And my my only my only fear is is Kirby has a history of of cocking these games up. Okay, he has a history of sometimes even dominating the football game, like really being in control of it, and then saying, "Hold on, guys, I need to start making some decisions now." So the world knows that I, Kirby Smart, am coaching this football game. And then the other team just capitalizes all over the, the decisions that Kirby makes. And then it snowballs on him and he loses. At some point in time, i got to feel like he's going to stop doing that. Maybe there's a coordinator that will just tackle the shit out of him and say no. Or just tell the players, ignore the headset. Like, I, yeah. when I send a play in, you do what I say. And if Kirby starts talking, you just ignore that voice because you know what his voice is. And, 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 you know, it, I don't know. I don't know the answer to that. I, I'm with you. I picked Georgia in this game simply because I, I like the team with a head start. I think it's going to be a really, really close football game. I think so, too. I, I love the coordinator matchups here, especially Todd Munkin against Brent Venables. I, trying to figure out what's going to go on here is going to be bananas. At Mississippi State last year, 23 carries eight yards rushing for Georgia against that that Mississippi State defense. Now, they run a 3-3-5, but could Venables find something to slow down that Georgia running game if they can put pressure on JT Daniels? They can absolutely come up with different ways. I'm curious about the Clemson wide receivers. I, I think that they have an advantage over that Georgia secondary right now because they got some fresh faces and whatnot. But I well, do... Well, I mean, hell now, Georgia's, Georgia's secondary, I mean, uh, receivers are... are and there's a lot that a lot. are banged up and whatnot, but they they You're got missing some, a lot. Yeah, no, absolutely. So I, I I do think that Georgia is going to be the better team this year. Uh, I will say that. So I'm going to ride with Georgia in this spot. Now, LSU, UCLA, and who boy, I I got to tell you, I I watching the game, watching UCLA and Hawaii the other night. I got even more convinced that LSU was going to win this game and, and maybe win it going away. Because the dominating part of UCLA's game was their their line play, right? Defensive line held Hawaii like 21 yards rushing, I believe, on 26 carries. I may have that back, but either way, or backwards. The offensive line dominated. Hawaii was able to run, or excuse me, UCLA was able to run all over Hawaii. They're not going to be able to do that against LSU. Like, I don't care how you line it up, you are not going to be able to do that against LSU. Now, I am a little worried about the distractions and whatnot LSU had to set up base in Houston this week. I don't think it matters when it comes to game time because I don't think they're going to be thinking about anything else other than beating the guy across from them. I do feel pretty good about LSU in this spot. I think that they'll get more out of the passing game than what Hawaii did. I think they'll definitely get more out of the running game. And if UCLA can't throw, remember Dorian Thompson-Robinson was not good 
throwing the against football against Hawaii at all. Now yeah. some of that, some of that, I worry. All right, because they didn't have to be right. Didn't have to. Why would you have thrown when you don't have to? Because against LSU, you're gonna have to, and you're gonna have all the chances in the world. Doesn't mean you can. Also, we have to remember, we think of guys like Chip Kelly, Gus Malzahn. We think of these guys and we think they just want to throw the football, throw the football, throw the football, because they go fast and they have high-powered offenses. But think about the offenses that they've ran throughout history. It all goes through the running game. And so if they can run the ball on you, they never stop running the ball on you. Yeah. Now, against LSU, they're going to have to throw the football. The difference is, is I... I think DTR is a good quarterback, and I think he can throw. This is going to be the best secondary he plays all year. If they can get their heads out of their ass and play right and not like they played last year, those windows are going to be tight, and he's going to have to make some hell of throws. I don't think the cornerbacks are going to be left on islands this year, and I think that will no, certainly surely not, don't. right? Yeah. Surely not. <laughs> not. Not after last year. So we we will see what happens, but I, I do feel good about LSU minus three. You're riding the same way, right? Yes, I think – I was nervous about this game all week, even all off season. But I just, I just came to an epiphany the other night. SEC team, big boy SEC teams, beat the hell out of Pac-10 teams, Pac-12 teams. It just doesn't matter. We're yeah. bigger, we're stronger, we're faster, we're better coached. There's not a level of the game where they're better than us. I shouldn't be worried. I think we're going to win. I think we're going to win in a route. I also think. UCLA is going to be a massive public play because we saw UCLA beat the hell out of them. And if you look at where the money went early, everybody's remembering LSU 5-5, five and five, terrible at football last year, laughing stock of the SEC, and they're seeing the Bruins on the way up. This is what people always remember as the last thing they saw. Yes, yes. The public gambler remembers what they just saw. They haven't seen LSU yet. That's the way it's going to go. San Jose, no, sorry, Notre Dame. Notre Dame, that's the way we're going. Notre Dame, seven and a half point favorite on Sunday against Florida State. Now, I I put this a little early in the pick because it's Notre Dame and it's Florida State. And there's a lot of love on Florida State right now. There was a ton of action because this line opened up around nine. It got bet up quickly to like 10, 10 and a half, came all the way back down. Now we're sitting at seven and a half. Uh, Jack Cohn is the quarterback for Notre Dame. Florida State, however, we have not figured out exactly what they're going to do. It sounds like Jordan Travis actually won that job over McKenzie Milton, and that tells me that Milton has not come back fully from his surgeries and whatnot. And that's why I liked Florida State so much. Have they announced a, a starter for this? Have you seen it? No, no, and and I don't think they're going to, by the way. And, and I'll tell you this. If I'm Mike Norvell, I'm not going to either. I fully understand why these coaches do it. It pisses me off. It makes it, I mean, you know, it makes it hard for us to talk about the game, to prep, and, 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 to, and to be ready, but I wouldn't do it if I was a coach. Yeah, the Tallahassee Democrat said uh, resolution of Florida State's quarterback battle won't be announced until game day. And, and that makes sense. So it's... I, I will tell you this, I I think if Jordan Travis is the quarterback, Florida State is not going to be able to throw the football because I I saw him last year, and unless he has made dramatic improvements, and I understand Florida State has brought in transfers, they have upgraded the roster, all of this good stuff, right? I get all of it. But if they can't throw the football on Notre Dame, they are not going to be able to run it. No, I don't think they'll run the football on him. So I'm I will take Notre Dame minus seven and a half here because it, I don't think Florida State can throw the football. I'm with you. I I I, I like Notre Dame in this game. I think Notre Dame is getting to. They're not Alabama. They're not Clemson. They're not Ohio State. I'm not asking them to be. Okay. They're getting to that point where they lose guys to the NFL. For the last five years, they've put the best offensive lineman in the draft in the NFL. And every year we say, "Oh, that offensive line is going to struggle." Well, guess what? The next year, they're still the best offensive line in college football, or they're in the top three or five or whatever. I, they're just at that point where I'm not worried about some of the positions that they lose. They lost a bunch of tight ends. Guess what? I bet whoever's playing tight end for them is really athletic and can catch football. Like, I just I just assume that that's where Brian Kelly's got in this program. Nobody trusts Jack Cohn because we didn't see Jack Cohn do much of shit while he yeah. was at Wisconsin. Guess what? Brian Kelly wasn't his coach at Wisconsin. 
Okay. And and I mean that with as much disrespect as I can to Paul Chris. <laughs> They're not the same. Okay. They're just not. You got one guy that might be the seventh or eighth best offensive coach in the Big Ten, and the other guy might be the third or fifth best offensive mind in all of college football. Big difference. Yes. Yes. Very I just, big try, but hang on. I could be way wrong. Jack Cohn could just be another dude, and, 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 and Notre Dame looked terrible. But I just have gotten to a point where I trust Brian Kelly. And if it burns me this year, then it burns me. And it's going to burn me in this game. But I like I, I like the, the Irish. Don't don't forget Notre Dame also has Tyler Buckner, who I, I think will end up being the quarterback eventually. It, it may not even well, be not this year. year. No, I don't. I don't. But, I don't think Cone's going to be bad enough to lose his job. I think we're going to see the best be. Cone we've ever seen. Yeah, I think I think you might be right about that. I think you might be right. So we're, I've seen good coaches take players that nobody thought were very good and turn them into really good players, and I'll be damned. Yep. It happened to be the coach. Yep, you are correct about that. So now we did we did see a Wisconsin quarterback leave and transfer to another school in the past. That was Alex Hornibrook, and he didn't even start for Florida State. So, so who knows? But I I do think this situation is different, and yes. and we are both riding Notre Dame minus seven and a half, even with the hook. We we like them. I, I like Notre Dame by double digits here. Next up, San Jose State. And USC. Now, we have not differed on a single pick thus far. We are into game four now. USC, a 14-point favorite. Again, reminder, the odds are provided by BetUS, where the game begins. There's a link in the description. Use the promo code NCAAF2021 to get a 125% deposit bonus. Let's, let's talk about this. You and I have discussed a theory. Where after we saw Hawaii get absolutely blasted by UCLA, we realized that Hawaii had not played a P5 team in two years. Right. This is another Mountain West team going up against a Pac-12 team. USC is even more talented than UCLA is. Correct. I wonder, right? Because this line was at 15 and a half, and then everybody saw Nick Starkle and that San Jose State offense come out and absolutely blast Southern Utah, who was like a 40-something point underdog to uh, Arizona State this week. But I... I love San Jose State. I love Brett Brennan. I, uh, Brent Brennan, excuse me. I I think everything about what they did last season was awesome. And I think USC might absolutely skull drag them this weekend. <laughs> I'm I'm all over USC minus fourteen because it's a it, it just the talent differential is there now. Clay Helton had a bunch of close games last year against teams that he had no business letting letting stay in the game. But I I do think if if the talent discrepancy is that big and USC comes out with their hair on fire, they could absolutely cover this 14. It won't even be close. I don't – I think that this could be a three-touchdown kind of game. Yeah, no, I'm totally with you. I, I think the same thing. We we see this the same. I, and this is not a knock on San Jose State. I think there's a world where USC is really that good. I think there's a world where after this year, there's a lot of folks apologizing to Clay Elton. Yeah, yeah, I tend to agree. Now, I do think that they can absolutely be beaten in conference, right? Utah, UCLA, et cetera. Like, I, I think they can absolutely be beaten. But I do think that they are still a really good football team. They are well coached. Like, they're not. I don't have them. Yeah, I don't yeah. have them going undefeated. But if they finish this season undefeated, it wouldn't shock me. It wouldn't shock me either. It wouldn't shock me either. So I'm, I'm gonna ride USC here, and and we'll see what happens. So that's that's four. Where we we completely agree, and it, here's here's the issue with us doing a show together for like six years already is we start to see things the same way. Um, well, I don't know about that. No, I think when we agree, we agree. We have no problems disagreeing. We agreed. just don't agree on any yeah. of these games. Correct. And if and we I, pick some other games, we probably would have disagreed a lot. We got three more, so let's let's see what we got here. Okay. Okay. Louisiana and Texas. Texas is an eight and a half point favorite here. And this is going back to that same theory, right? Now, Louisiana absolutely hammered, hammered Iowa State last year in their opening game. And Iowa State, of course, went on to uh, play in the Big 12 title game, won the Fiesta Bowl. They beat up on Oregon and all that good stuff. Texas, I the matchup that I am looking at here is the offensive line for Louisiana against the defensive line for Texas. And Texas is gargantuan. I there's a lot of people that are all over Louisiana. They think Billy Napier is going to win this game. All this good stuff. 
I don't think Louisiana is going to be able to run the ball, and Levi Lewis is not a great passing quarterback. I I got a lot of faith in Hudson Card. Like I'm riding the favorite. I'm riding Texas here, and I, I think they win by double digits at home because I, I trust Steve Sarkeesian to be able to put together a game plan to win this. And he understands. Like you have the better players. You are at home. This is a a Sun Belt team that you should beat, and it will be embarrassing in your first loss. You don't want to repeat what Tom Herman did. I I'm on Texas here. I like Texas minus the eight and a half. Yeah, I'm 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 kind of I'm kind of big on this one now. Do I trust them enough to to make it an official play over at BetUS? No, but but I do like Texas in the spot. I think they've got a a big time advantage uh, at the line of scrimmage. Well, I made this an official play in my opinion. Okay, I like Louisiana. I like Billy Napier. I think I got the better uh, coach football team. I think I've got the more experienced team. Yeah. I, I also have another coach on the other side that understands there's a level of desperation here. And this is what I like about Louisiana is I actually got a little on the money line, but that don't matter. If you've got eight and a half or nine and a half, you can get it some places. I'm, I'm telling you, it, Texas just wants to get out of this game with a win. All right. Would they love to beat the hell out of them and make all his boosters happy by, 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 you know, covering a line for him? Sure. But he just wants a W. Okay, He just wants to get off on the right foot. And I think this is going to be one of the hardest fought games Texas is going to have all year long. I, oh, really I, I agree that. with that. I, I do I agree. Really, It'll really be hard believe fought. that. I do think, like for me, I think there's such a big advantage at the line of scrimmage that Texas will be able to to run a lot of things that... But Texas has a big advantage at the line of scrimmage all the time. against hey, you right. All the time. And guess what? They lose a lot of those games. This is true. This is true. All right, so we can dive off of that one. We got two more games. Fresno State at Oregon. Now, the Ducks have got a massive game coming up next week. They are playing at the Horseshoe, and it's an early game for them. This situation was supposed to be a pretty easy win, but Fresno State last week just hammered UConn 45 to nothing. This line sits at Oregon minus 21. It's actually gone up. It was 20. Just a couple of days ago, and it's now moved all the way up to 21. A lot of love for the Ducks here. I do think they are the significantly more talented team. But you got Oregon in a bit of a look-ahead spot. I like Jake Hayner. I like what Kalen DeVore is doing. I don't trust. I, I've said it all offseason. I do not trust the Oregon secondary. And I think Fresno's got some weapons, man. Like, Ronnie Rivers can catch passes out of the backfield. He's a great running back as well. I think that the, the DeBoer kind of spread offense that he runs where he's going to he's gonna find space for his guys to get out there and make some moves. I, I like Fresno to keep this within the three touchdowns here. I, I think Oregon is a much better team, but I also think like Oregon is looking at that game against Ohio State as that's the one that we got to get. And they may not be paying all the attention that they need to to Fresno State. What, uh, what do you say? So I don't have an opinion on this game one way or the other. I'm going to make a pick because we're making a pick here. But I, I really, I haven't talked about it at all up till now because I don't, I don't have a feeling. If you told me who, I, who do I got to pick, I'm going to go with the same consistency that I've been. I think the bigger, stronger, faster, better coach football teams are going to win. Oregon's bigger. Oregon's stronger. Oregon's faster. People are killing their secondary. Listen, their secondary is not great in comparison to the best offenses in football. But do we really think Fresno State's got the best offense in football just because they beat the hell out of UConn? No. I made more money last week on one game than I have in a long, long time just betting against UConn. I bet against the team total. I bet against the first half. I bet against the second half. I bet against them, you know, for the, for the whole game. You just play against UConn blindly, and you're just going to print tickets all year long. Yes, yes. Because Fresno did that, I'm still sticking with the – the better team, bigger, stronger, better coached, is going to win, going to cover. There's a reason this number went up. You know, I, I think the books know that that Oregon's big and Oregon's strong, and Oregon has playoff aspirations, all right? And they're not going to overlook somebody if they've got playoff aspirations. They know they can lose the uh, Ohio State game and still make the playoff. They, they need to beat the hell out of everybody else. Yeah, yeah, you you could be right about that. I don't disagree that Oregon is is in the playoff conversation. 
But I do wonder about this one because I think that I think Fresno can make them uncomfortable, and this seems like one of those games that Fresno would be circling. It kind of goes against my theory, you know, that that we just talked about. But yeah, I I think Fresno has got a few tricks up their sleeve that they will try in this game, and I think they'll keep it closer. But you are rolling minus twenty one, so we finally have two disagreements. Let's see what we end up with on our last game here before we get out of here and head into the weekend. And we are going to ride Texas Tech minus two against Houston. And this is a, a neutral sider. And, uh, and honestly, I don't remember even where the game is being played. Do you remember? It's being played at Houston. Is it at Houston? Played at, not at Houston. No, it's at, it's at the Texans Stadium. NRG. Yeah, whatever it's called. Yeah. Okay, okay. Texas Tech, again, two-point favorite here. Matt Wells needs good things to happen, right? And I also think that Dana Holgerson does as well. The quarterback tune for Houston has not been great over the last however many years, but he is now a veteran. He is rocking and rolling. And Houston, I mean, there are big expectations from them this season. The fact that they are an underdog to Texas Tech kind of surprised me a little bit with as bad as Texas Tech has been. But I'm, I'm going to tell you a matchup to look out for, okay? The Texas Tech wide receivers... All of them are like 6'3", 6'4", 6'5". They got a 6'6 dude out there. Like, they are ridiculous. Tyler Shuck, the quarterback from Oregon last year, transferred in. He has won the starting job with the Red Raiders. I I kind of like Texas Tech here because of the desperation mode. I am I have to see Houston actually play really well before I'm just – because I, I took the over on Houston – but I, I need to see it. I need to believe it because the last two years have been dreadful for them. Matt Wells has been in some games. He has lost some one-score games that that they had a real shot of winning, right? Texas last year in like triple overtime. They, they've been in some some tight games, and he really needs this one. Like I, I can go ahead and, and write his check that he is leaving if they lose this game and – and I think I'm going to ride with them. I'm riding with Texas Tech minus two in this spot. You can bet on a dead man walking. I will not. <laughs> I'm going to bet on Holgo. Okay, I'm going to bet on the better coach. I think they're the better football team. I think the wrong team is favored here. Yes, you're betting on a team that's desperate, and Houston's not desperate. True. True. You know who? You know who brings the lady home for the bar? The guy that's not desperate. That's right? true. The guy that's got he walks confidence. in. Yeah, he walks in. He pounds his drink and he walks out. Right. Well, that is something that uh, that Holgerson is known for. I mean, the no skullet, doubt. the gambling, the Red Bulls. The, hey, I'm I understand Red Bull and vodka. Like, let's go, Dana Holgerson. I think they're the better football team. Yeah, just, you might I be right. Do. You might be right. I, I know Texas Tech brought in a bunch of transfers. Like, they seem to shore up their defense a little bit. I if I think I'm, they're trying. Yeah, I think they're trying a lot of things. But that's that's the mark of this team that's desperate. They got no choice. They got to throw everything they can at the wall and hope something sticks. Dana. It's taken him a while to get this football team into his image. True. Okay. We're now we're now at the point where this should be the best Dana team he's had so far. They they do have a lot of talent, a lot of skill talent. We'll see what that offense looks like. We'll see what that offense looks like. I, I don't think that Houston's defense is going to be able to stop Texas Tech a bunch. Have you had a Dana Holgerson team that had great defense ever. No. And there, okay. there were a couple that's, at West Virginia that were that's, okay. That's the, but that's not what he does. Okay. Hey, should should we be looking at the total here? Sixty four and a half? No, because there's a world where Texas Tech's offense sucks. Uh, you're not wrong. What what, is, what does your offense look like in the past? Now, just because Houston's defense is bad, man, it is, this Texas Tech team has struggled to score in the past. And th- this is true. They they but almost no, always... I would not touch the total for that very reason. <laughs> now, there's a world where they combine score 85, okay? Yeah. That could happen. And, and we just blow this total so far out the water, it's not even funny. But if Texas Tech is bad... Houston you don't crush want them. that. Yeah. And, yeah. and you don't yeah. want if that Houston total. beats them by 45, then they're not going they're not going to run it up. They're just going to win the game and get out. Yeah. Yeah, you're not wrong about that. You are not wrong about that. All right, that is going to wrap up our pick 'em for the other games. Of course, go over and check out the SBR College Football Show with Chris and our buddy Sam, and you can always check out the Bet US College Football Show with myself and Parker and and Kyle Hunter. Links are in the description for those Thanks for listening to the Winning Cures Everything podcast. The website is winningcureseverything.com, and if you want to connect with us, we're on Twitter, at GaryWCE, 
at Chris B. Giannini, at Winning Cures, or you can email us, Gary at winningcureseverything.com or Chris at winningcureseverything.com. Subscribe everywhere you need to subscribe, and we'll see you soon.